Patrick, hey, congratulations for the Queen of Spades. Thank you. Hey, so uh, what initially attracted you to direct a film like the Queen of Spades? So I think the, the biggest, so the two things for me is one that there, I knew, you know, Candyman and I knew uh, Bloody Mary, but I'd never heard a I'd never heard of Queen of Spades. So to know that this mythology or, you know, kind of folklore was very similar to those two, but just in a completely different environment was one of the big pieces for me. Um, the other piece of it to me is in a horror movie, there's all those moments where you can just, you can set up the audience, you can get them on their seat, you can hook them in. And then, and then it's just about giving them those surprises. <laughs> it, so is, is there really a folklore for Queen of Spades or yeah. is it the, really? No, yeah, yeah, it's a Russian mythology. Yeah, there's, it's, um, if you go in, it's, it's interesting because I know, you know, reading some of the comments on some of the trailer, people just thinking it's a blatant ripoff of Bloody Mary. However, if you go in and do, do your research on Queen of Spades, there is a folklore mythology. Wow. I, I, would, I, was, I was Googling this morning trying to see if there, were, if there was a folklore. Maybe I'm not Googling the right thing. I'll, I'll try. Well, and there's a Russian opera by a guy named Pushkin um, that is part of the mythology as well. So that pulls on that, on that, um, on that mythology. Now, knowing that, um, you know, there, there are films that are very similar, you know, like Candyman and Bloody Mary, how did you want to approach this basically saying, you know what, we're not going to be like those guys? I, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is if I look at, you know, Candyman, Candyman is very urban. Um, it has its own, its own history to it. Um, you know, I'm trying to remember, I think when we announced, I don't even know if they had announced that they were doing the remake um, or maybe they had, and obviously it's been delayed because of, because of the pandemic. And I think, I think, you know, the big piece for me and one of the other elements that I really liked about the Russian is there's this, there's a, a tactile element. Like in those other ones, there's nothing you do with the mirror. In this one, you're actually drawing the door. You're actually creating that opening. You're doing the, you know, and as I said to somebody else, it's like, if you've ever tried to clean off makeup or lipstick off of a mirror, it always leaves a residue. So there's almost that, you know, kind of, imprint of what you've done to rem to remind you so I, I i think at the end of the day what what i was trying to separate it from was listen how can we bring this this mythology from russia and bring it here um at the you know at the root of it all the mythology is very similar it's about you know conjuring something from the other side to come into your your element um and i, I think fundamentally there was always going to be those synergies and i think where I try to focus on was, all right, what is the story of Anna and Mary? And how do we, we're really, we're not telling the Queen of Spades story, that, that is definitely an element, but how are we telling this mother-daughter story? I, I, I know uh, sometimes people are superstitious, especially since this is based off of, uh, you know, like a real folklore. Are you, how careful were you guys not to, on, on, performing these rituals <laughs> on set without uh without actually like triggering us you know an actual possession or something uh, you know what i it's it's funny because it's been you know it's been two years since we shot i think anna mentioned there was something we had done different i i like maybe it's just uh, as my gray in my beard i'm getting older i think it was a matter of having a conversation and feeling and trying to sense what were people comfortable with um, you know, again, this, this is where mythology and you said, it, what are, what are people comfortable with? Cause you, we're all going to believe something different. And I fully, fully believe if we do, if us did anything like this right now and we were quiet in whatever space we were, we're going to hear something. And then the, because you're going to be in that space that I've just conjured up a, a demon, your mind is going to go somewhere and you're probably going to be reticent to leave your bathroom. So. Are, are you personally a superstitious or a um, poor, poor person? I, I would say I wasn't. I, my wife lived in Jersey city for two years and taught in Washington Heights. And I went and lived there for a little bit of time with her. 
and she lived in an old art factory that her, her aunt owned. Um, and I think there had been several, several deaths in the factory. It had been, it had been pretty old and it was probably the first time I'd ever lived anywhere where stuff happened. And I went I viewed stuff that I couldn't explain. Like there's just, I, I still have to this day, no way to explain it. Or, you know, you would hear things that just weren't, weren't explained. And so that opened and her aunt was very much in that clairvoyant kind of talking to dead people, new stuff about like she, um, she had contacted some of the, uh, the family members of uh, deceased people from 9-11 and knew stuff about the, their relatives that nobody else knew. She never asked for money. And so like, it was just a matter of like those kind of elements that I couldn't explain. I couldn't rationalize because I feel like I'm a pretty logical individual. Um, that that opened my eyes to say, listen, I, there, there's just, there's so many possibilities and other elements that I can't fully understand. Um, so yeah, I would say that opened my eyes to believing something. Are they good? Are they bad? I, I have no clue. <laughs> now, I understand this is your uh, directorial debut. How was that overall experience for you? I mean, uh, I guess uh, making a horror film as a directorial debut is quite an experience. I, you know, I've, I've produced, I've primarily been in the producer seat, my, you know, in my filmmaking career and, um, you know, directing, obviously making a lot of decisions. I think I'm extremely thankful for the collaborators I've had, like the DP, uh, Scott McIntyre, couldn't say no good things about, enough about him. Chelsea Graham, our costume person, again, amazing. John Ainsley, my co-writer, incredible. Um, the cast was absolutely incredible. And then my producing partner, Brendan McNeil, also just, you know, outstanding. So, and then my editor, who I've worked with for a long time, Jordan, Jordan Krug. So I think, you know, like anything, it's the people you work with. And um, I would, they're, they're most of the people, not most of it. I, I, I can't wait to work with all these people again. Um, and so that was, that was the blessing. I was very fortunate in that regard. How did you like working with, uh, you know, CG on the film versus, you know, practical? Um, so I would say it was, it was a big learn for me because I hadn't really done much work on CG. You know, I produced the film Jack Brooks Monster Slayer, which, you know, in the late 2000s, there was kind of, we were trying to go, all right, we're doing practical over CG because I don't know if CG was quite where it should, if you were doing Jurassic Park, it was there, but most people weren't doing Jurassic Park, so it wasn't quite there. Um, you know, it was it was great because I think we were able to add a bunch of L, like small bits. Like I would say the CG we did in this movie was not uh, totally in your face or, or, you know, it was about putting the queen in the mirror in spots or putting her in the water or, or other elements that were, you know, kind of kind of smaller and not going full in because of budget limitations and what we could what we could do um but I, it was a huge learning curve for me and and enjoyed it and look forward to exploring that further excellent and um over over half your cast is a uh, is a uh, young uh young adult i would say yeah well, why what how, how was it working with them and why was ava perfect for the leading actress role from start to beginning so I, I would say Ava was was great because she could handle both sides. She could handle playing just a regular teen and, you know, those emotions with her mom and the, you know, emotions of wanting to be accepted by these other people and feel, you know, I think we can sympathize her as she's getting peer pressured to conjure the queen to then following her progression to becoming possessed um, and really handling the possession. I think, you know, we saw a lot of fantastic actresses, you know, young actresses, but I don't know if they could handle that massive, you know, dichotomy. Um, and then the rest of the cast, I, and I got to give it to, you know, a guy like Eric Osborne, the, the character, he brought the air character to life. And then I think even, you know, again, Nabil Ra uh, Rajo and um, Jamie Block, again, just bringing these characters to life that, you know, obviously the focus is the Mary 
in, uh, in a relationship with these other characters, I thought we just, we were able to do some great casting and those, those actors were fantastic to work with. Excellent. Well, let, let, let me leave with one more thought. I, I want to know is uh, what, uh, what inspired the look of the queen? So I, I, you know, it was a lot, it was, I worked with David Scott who did Jack Brooks Monster Slayer. And we talked about how the queen would die and what would have happened with queen. But another big piece of it, I would say that I would really go for is talking with our costume designer, Chelsea Graham, and pulling a lot of inspiration out of images where, what was the silhouette of this queen? What was she wearing and what was that creating? Because yes, I think we created, you know, a, a great monster, a, you know, character with the, the gray face and the, the potted and, and all the all the scars kind of affecting her. But I think what really elevated it was the costume design that created this regal kind of queen kind of shape so that when you do see her in silhouette, you know what's coming. That's true. It, it, well, you know what? If I see that, it's horrifying not out of a mirror. That's for sure. Yeah. Patrick. Thank you very much uh, for talking to us about uh, Queen of Spades. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a terrifying movie, and I will I will never do a ritual like that on America. <laughs> well, thanks, Kig. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.